Okay, here uh, we're gonna learn how to solve a damped free vibration. So in this case, we have an additional ter term due to viscous damping, and we also know the initial position and initial velocity. And in order to simplify our discussion, I would like to first transfer these um, equation into a standard term uh, format. 2 omega zeta x single dot plus omega n square x equal to 0. So comparing these two equations, you can see that we divide both sides by, by m, and then we have m double dot plus c over m single dot plus k over m x equal to 0. So let's compare these two equations. You're going to find out your omega n is the same thing, square root k over m, and then your damping ratio, zeta, is going to be c over 2 m k. All right? So that's how we convert your mck into zeta and omega n. As you can see here, we reduced the number of um, parameters. All right, so the first thing, we also assume x equals to a e lambda t. The same, that's the same, uh, so we assume the solution is in the same format as the uh, free vibration. And then as you can tell, we just plug the x back into the original equation. We plug it into this equation. And your x double dot, again, is a lambda square e lambda t. Your x single dot is just a lambda e lambda t. And then you we have a lambda square e lambda t plus a lambda e lambda t times the coefficient 2 omega n zeta and also the coefficient omega m a e lambda t. So that should give us 0. So based on the same concept, we can find out some of the common terms like a e lambda t, they're common. We can cancel it out. So after doing so, we have lambda square plus 2 omega n zeta lambda plus omega n square equal to 0. So that's just a, a uh, second order equation. So that means we have two solutions. So lambda 1 is minus zeta omega n plus omega n zeta minus 1 and lambda 2 equal to minus zeta omega n minus omega zeta minus 1. Okay, so that's the solutions we find for lambda. So as you can see here, we have to consider three different uh, conditions. So the first condition of the first case, number 1, you're your zeta is smaller than 1. Okay, and also your damping is always positive value, so that means your zeta is always greater or equal to 0. So your case one, number 1, that means your zeta is between 0 and 1, and then we call this condition as underdamped condition. And then if you check, go back and check your lambda 1 and lambda 2, you can s first you can tell your lambda 1 doesn't equal to lambda 2. The second thing you can tell is your lambda 1 and lambda 2 are complex numbers. That's because your zeta square is smaller than 1. So what's under the square root is actually a negative value. So let's write it out. We have, so in this case, what we do is we define an other omega d. Your omega d is omega n 
times one minus zeta squared. Okay, so then your lambda one can be written as minus zeta omega n plus omega d j, and then your lambda two is minus zeta omega n minus omega d j. All right. So because you have two different lambda values, we can assume a general solution x t equals to a one e lambda one t plus a two e lambda two t. Again, your a one and a two are constants to be determined. So that's the position. We know that we can easily get one equation from uh, initial position here. We also have an equation for initial velocity, so that's why we have to calculate the uh, velocity the general solution of velocity x t dot. So x t dot is just a one lambda one e lambda one t plus a two lambda two e lambda two t. All right, so let's plug everything back in. We have x t equal to zero equals to a one plus a two. That's initial position. We have initial velocity. That's a one lambda one plus a two lambda two equals to v naught. And then, as you can read. As you can tell, we can plug the lambda one, lambda two back in. You have a one plus a two minus zeta omega n. So that's the real part, and then the imaginary part is plus a one omega d minus a two omega d. J. All right, so that's the two equations we have. Let's name it as equation one and equation two. By solving these two equations, you can find a one and a two, and thus you have your time domain、um, solution. Again, we don't want your our solution in the exponential format, so that's why we use Euler's Euler's.、Um, Equation, and we can expand our x t as equals to a one. Let's plug this lambda one back in. So we have zeta omega m plus omega d j times t, and plus a two e minus z omega m minus omega d j times t. So The first thing we can do is we can collect all the、uh, real parts. So your a one e minus zeta x omega n t. That's your real part of the first term, and then we also find the real part of the second term. All right, and then what's left behind are two imaginary parts. Omega d j t. Plus a two e minus omega d j t, and then as you can see here, a one plus a two is just x naught. So the first term becomes x naught times e minus zeta omega n t, and then the second term we can use Euler's、uh, expression. So we have a one cosine omega d t plus a two sine Omega d t j. That's what we got from the first term, and then the second term is plus a two cosine omega d t minus a two. Oh, sorry, I found a mistake. Here should be a one a two sine omega d t j. All right, so let's collect terms. We have x naught e minus zeta omega n t, and then in the end we have a one plus a two cosine omega d t 
plus a1 minus a2 psi omega d t j. All right, so in this case, we can go back to equation one and equation two again. As we can tell before, your x a1 plus a2 is just x naught. And then we just need to find what is a1 minus a2. Okay, let's go back to the uh, to the equation here, equation one and equation two. I, I would like to skip it, and you can do your own calculation. Your a1 minus a2. can be, oh, let me calculate it again, a1 minus a2 times omega dj and minus a1 plus a2 omega n zeta, that equals to v naught, that's your equation number two. And then your equation number one gives you the summation of a1 and a2, that's x naught. So you plug your second equation, uh, your equation one into equation two, and you have a one a two omega d j equals to v naught plus omega n x naught zeta. All right. So then your a one minus a two j equals to v naught plus omega n x naught zeta over omega d. All right, so then you can plug it back into the uh, equation, and then you have your x t equals to x naught e zeta omega n t x naught cosine omega d t plus v naught plus omega n x naught zeta over omega d psi omega dt. So that's your time domain equation. So then once we have these two equations, let's do some magic. So from the first equation, we know a1 plus a2 equals to x naught. That's your equation number one. And then from the second equation, we have a1 minus a2 omega dj equals to a1 plus a2 zeta omega n that equals to x naught zeta omega n. That's your new e equation number two, okay? So once you have this, we can, so we can plug in the initial conditions and, and solve the equation. But in, we don't, we usually don't want the uh, solution in exponential format, so that's why we have to use all of Euler's theory to expand these expression to convert these expansion uh, expression to time uh, sinusoidal waves. All right, so let's plug in lambda one and lambda two. We have a one e minus zeta omega n t minus omega d t j, oh actually plus, let's see, yeah, that should be plus, and then also plus a2 e minus zeta omega n t minus omega d t j. All right, so we plug your lambda 1 and lambda 2 back, uh, we replace lambdas by the uh, parameters, and then we see that this term has no complex j in it, so we can assume that's a complex, that's a real part. So we can collect this term, e minus zeta omega n t, and move it out. We have a1 e omega d t j plus a2 e omega d t j negative. Okay, so here you can see it's very similar to our free vibra uh, undamped free vibration. So let's write it out. Minus zeta omega n t. And then we can write this as a1 plus a2 
cosine omega dt plus a1 minus a2 j sine omega dt. If you forget how to do this, you can check the uh, undamped free vibration video, and then it's just basically the same thing. And then after this point, we have we just need to know a1 plus a2 and a1 minus a2 that's already given in equation one and two we just plug it back in e zeta omega nt this is just x naught cosine omega dt the second part is just x naught zeta omega n omega d okay and psi omega dt Oops. Oh, I think I forgot one thing in the velocity, which is a velocity v naught in equation number two. So that's why we we have to add v naught here. All right. So then we use the same triangle. The coefficient of your sine term, this coefficient, is going to be placed on the real on the x-axis. That's a v naught plus x naught zeta omega n over omega d, and then the coefficient of your cosine x naught. That's your vertical displacement. And then, as we uh, talk about previously, this is your new amplitude. This is your phase phi. And then we can write rewrite this expression as a e lambda omega n t psi omega d t plus phi. And then as you can see here, your x is just x naught square plus v naught plus x naught omega n zeta omega d square. And then take the square root. And then your phi is just invert tangent x naught omega d over v naught plus x naught zeta omega n. Okay, so that's how we solve the uh, damped free vibration. The same concept, same uh, flow, but it's just more complicated. So this is just case number one when zeta is smaller than one. In case number two, we can assume that your zeta is greater than one. Actually, that's much easier. So in this case, your lambda one and lambda two, they are real numbers. If they're real numbers according to Euler's uh, expression, there shouldn't be any sine or cosines in the uh, in the final expression. So there is no oscillation at all. So, we, but because lambda one and lambda two they're not equal, we can still use the same general solution. A one e lambda one t plus a two e lambda two t. Okay, so let's plug the initial conditions in. X D and X D dot. If you want, we can write this X D dot out. It's A1 lambda 1 E lambda 1 T plus A2 lambda 2 E lambda 2 T. So then we have a1 plus a2 equals to x naught, the same thing. And a1 lambda 1 plus a2 lambda 2 equals to v naught. And by doing so, and let's recall our lambda 1 is minus zeta omega n plus square root zeta square minus 1 times omega n and then your lambda 2 is minus zeta omega n minus zeta minus 1 omega n so they are real numbers 
So you can solve these two linear equations. If you if you don't want to calculate by hand, uh, I s so you can use live script to do so. And then I'm going to skip this. And eventually you're going to have your A1 and A2 values. Let me write it out for you. Your A1 is going to be... Hmm, see your a1 is pretty long is minus v not plus minus xi zeta zeta square minus 1 omega n x not over 2 omega n zeta square minus 1 okay so your A2 is positive V0 plus zeta plus zeta minus 1 omega n x0 over 2 omega n zeta minus 1. So that's your solution of A1 and A2. You just plug these constants back into your xt, then you get a time domain uh, relationship. So during the class, we're going to briefly talk about how, how it looks like uh, in time domain. Alright, actually there is another special case, case number 3, when your zeta is exactly 1. And then let's look at our lambda 1 and lambda 2. You can see the, lambda, your, the, the second term becomes 0. So your lambda 1 is minus zeta omega n. Your lambda 2 is also minus zeta omega n. And then in this case, you have lambda 1 equal to lambda 2. So if you recall your um, ODE class, in this case, you have two identical characteristic roots. So in this case, we have to do something special for the uh, general solution. So your gen general solution should be a1 e lambda 1 t plus a2 t e lambda 2 t. So let's pay attention here. You have to add a t in the coefficient. Otherwise, you won't be able to solve the problem. Okay. So once you have this general solution, the same thing, we need to calculate the velocity a1 lambda 1 e lambda 1 t. But then the time derivative for the second term is tricky. You have to do, do it by parts. You have a2 e lambda 2 t plus a2 lambda 2 t e lambda 2 t. Okay, so let's plug your initial position in. So you have a1 equals to x naught. Plug, let's plug in the initial velocity. That means your a1 lambda 1 plus a2 equal to v naught. Alright, so that's actually very easy to solve. Your a1 is just x0, your a2 is just v0 minus a1 lambda 1, that's just v0 minus x0 minus zeta omega n, that's v0 plus x0 zeta omega n. And then you, you, once you have your a1 and a2, you have your xd equals to a1 plus a2 t e minus zeta omega n t. And then in this case, I forget one thing, your zeta is actually 1, so you can replace all the zeta by 1. That's v naught x naught omega n. And then you can easily remove your zeta here because your zeta is simply 1. So that's the solution for case number three, when zeta equal to one, and then we call these condition as um, critically damped. And then if zeta is greater than one, we call that condition overdamped. All right.